All right, so I'm currently on the phone with Mike. He's another musician that reached out about the current interview series. So I'm going to go ahead and give him the chance to introduce himself. Hey, guys. My name is Mike, Mike Pinder. I am a professional drummer, and by professional, I mean I make my money doing nothing but drumming. I've been doing it for about 24 years now. Um, I'm 34, um, and I work in a whole bunch of different um, venues um, with music whether it be from musical theater to touring productions of shows to uh, indie artists, working with bands, working in theme park, to working weddings, to working corporate events. Um, I do, I have a whole slow slew of things that I do. So I stay really busy doing drumming. Awesome. That's very cool. Um, so with these interviews, I always like to kind of go back to the roots and find out, you know, what, what was it about music that pulled you into it and made you want to pursue that in your life? Uh, so when I, uh, my dad was a musician, uh, growing up. And of course that's always kind of one of those things where if music is a huge part of your childhood, it's going to be a huge part of your adulthood. Um, so he was a musician and he was a huge fan of the Beatles. Um, so when I was a very young kid, as well as having like Disney and cartoons playing, my dad would always play like the Beatles movies, like help and hard days night. And, um, I remember just sitting there watching Ringo on my TV and being like, he looks so cool. Like that guy looks like he's having fun and everyone's like listening to him and paying attention to him and turning back from the audience and looking at this drummer and being like, what's so cool about that guy? Um, so I just always was like attracted, um, in a very admirable sense to Ringo. So of course, when I was like three or four uh, my dad being a, a musician, um, he bought me a Mickey Mouse drum kit. <laughs> um, and like, it's like one of those like really cheap ones from Walmart, you know, so it's I mean, all plastic and the heads are just pretty much paper. <laughs> um, and I, I used to play that thing like almost every single day um, until I busted it probably by, like three months and a half. And, <laughs> and then, mm -hmm. um, and then when I got to middle school, um, my middle school was kind of weird. I grew up in, a, in an area that was really much into the arts. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of forced, uh, uh, forces of, is a weird word to say, but it was mandatory for kids to take a band class in my middle school. And so I had to pick an instrument. Um, and at the time I was kind of like in my rebellious age at that moment. And my dad really wanted me to do the band thing. And I was trying really hard to get out of it by doing like some elective, like being an, in like a, a student helper for a teacher or something like that, just anything else. Mm -hmm. And so my dad was like, no, you're going to do this and you're going to pick an instrument and you're going to stick with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> out of spite, I was like, well, fine, I'll be a drummer because <laughs> out of everything my dad, my dad plays drums is the one thing he doesn't play. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of like, I know you're trying to make me bond with you, but I'm just going to throw this back in your face. Little did I know that was actually my dad's plan was for me to be a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's the, that's the one thing he can't play. And that's the one thing he, he wanted his son to be mm -hmm. so, so he could play with his son musically. Um, and the second I started like my, as, as soon as I said that he enrolled me in private lessons. Um, and the second I picked up sticks and actually tried to do something fundamentally on the drums, I just fell in love. And mm -hmm. I thought I was about nine or 10 when that started. And I haven't put down the stick since. Um, so that was all through middle school and high school. I did every faucet of uh, bands uh, from anything from like symphonic to marching to indoor drum line to um, world music, steel drums, um, just Again, like the area I grew up in, like the middle school and high school was like really, really put an emphasis on music and uh, liberal arts. Mm -hmm. And I was just fortunate enough to have such a, a huge education um, at my fingertips for that stuff. Um, the college that I ended up going to was University of Central Florida. And I went there. Um, under the impression that I was going to be in the percussion program, which was one of the, at the time, it was one of the top ones in the nation. Mm -hmm. um, I think behind, I think it was Texas and um, I want to say, obviously like Berkeley and Juilliard, but like we don't even count those guys because that's so far out of my league. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, 
but I, I went there and then I ended up not doing the program. I was accepted. Um, I was all ready to go. And like, like probably about like one week before I started college, I decided to drop out of the project, um, the, the, um, the program. And that was a weird reason why, um, at the time I had seen a bunch of my friends go from my high school into that college program, whether it be the percussion program or the music theory program or the performance arts program, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they would come back to high school, you know, and visit with us and I'd go hang out with them, um, at the local diner and stuff. And we just talk. And I noticed that they became just very jaded and, um, pretentious about music um, where they would talk down about stuff that we like bands we used to like and mm -hmm. all this stuff. And at the time I misinterpret that as the program, like brainwashing these people. Okay. Um, and the, 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 the reasoning I had at the time was I don't understand how someone could ever listen to a piece of music or genre of music and not at least connect to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was my feelings back then. And I, at the time, you know, being an 18 year old, I was like, I don't want to be that person. I never want to be a person that can't try to explore something about a piece of music or a genre of music and find something about it that appeals to me, you know, um, uh, now being a little bit older, being 34 and looking back at that, I now understand they were just being kids too. They were mm -hmm. just being college people. Everyone goes through some phase of that when they're transitioning from childhood into adulthood. The musician um, elitism. Yeah. Is that oh, like, just everybody does that? Not even just musicians, but mm -hmm. people. I, I think that is a necessary part of maturity. Um, and I was just too young to see that. Um, so I, that's technically where my formal education ended was at the end of high school. Okay. So let, let's take a quick step back. Um, so you mm -hmm. went through a lot of information there. Uh, you know, you said you were part of the traditional curriculum in school, all of the band facets. Uh, you said you're doing private lessons. Were you also kind of, uh, experimenting with like the garage band and playing with, uh, you know, oh, other yes. musicians as a hobby? Oh man. Yeah. So uh, my dad, not only being a, a musician, so, uh, I mean, he, he's played everything from woodwinds. I've seen him play trumpet like twice in my life, but he doesn't own a trumpet. So I don't, I, I, I hesitate to say he's a brass player. Mm -hmm. Um, his primary instrument currently is guitar and is, was guitar my whole life growing up. Um, he's, he's a great, uh, saxophonist and flautist. Um, but he primarily does play guitar a lot. Um, and of course with that, he can play bass. He knows piano and I've seen him actually play a few songs on piano. Mm -hmm. Um, but on top of being a well-rounded and great musician, he also was the pastor of the church that I went to. Um, and it was a very small community style church. So not only was he the pastor, he also got to be the music director. So every Sunday from 10, from age 10 forward, um, he would make me play in the praise band with him. Um, and it started off with playing percussion next to a more experienced drummer who was older and knew more mm -hmm. and just trying to learn how to keep time, how to count measures, how to follow the rhythms, how to change, uh, between, you know, the different feels of one song, you know, doing all that stuff from a very young age. Mm -hmm. Eventually that drummer, he left and then I took over the drum set role. Um, and of course, because my dad's the pastor and the music director, nobody could really tell me I was doing anything wrong <laughs> except for him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. But the problem was he was also my dad and I was, a, I was a young teenager kid. So he couldn't really tell me I was doing wrong either. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, but that, so on top of, so I was doing that every Sunday and then we ended up having like three services a week. And so I was playing live in front of, um, a live audience at least three times a week on top of doing all the formal, um, band stuff on top of playing like, you know, football games with the marching band on top of competitions on top of all States and nationals and stuff like that. But then I had got a drum set when I was probably like a full actual real drum kit, probably when I was like 13 or 14. And from that time on, I would listen to whatever song I liked on the radio mm -hmm. and I would sit there and like, I would go buy the CD or something like that and put on 
like listen to it on my headphones and I would write out what the drummer was playing. Like my, one of my, uh, my, my first mentor, mm-hmm. he taught me how, like how important it was for transcripts to happen. Cause he's like, you're human. Your brain can only hold so much information. It's okay to write things down. You write down ideas, you write down stories to remember them later. Mm-hmm. You write down musical ideas to remember it later. So I just got really into, um, handwriting like drummers transcripts and stuff like that sure so you know i would be in classes like they my free periods or when i'm supposed to be reading or doing a homework assignment or something like that instead i'd have my headphones on listening to music and writing out like you know um chad sexton from 311 or uh, i'm spaced on his name but the drummer from incubus or metallica mm-hmm. or like uh, like there's just like a whole slew of things and then of course i got into tower power and then i got into pat Metheny. You know, so um, I was just kind of like writing down all this stuff. And then I would go home after my school day and I would put the CD into my stereo player, put my headphones on, and I would play along to that. So, you know, I started doing that whole thing where every day you're practicing to a drummer that you hear that inspires you. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, I have my actual like lessons I had to keep up with as well. So I was going through all the different books and everything that you have to go through. Mm-hmm. Um, like the, the basic ones like stick control and uh, the Alfred uh, drum set method. And uh, I'm, I'm spacing on the name, but it's, um, it's a uh, Gary Chester's book, whatever that's called. Um, so I was, I was doing all that. And then <sighs> playing with people my age never got, was never something I liked doing. Um, I always played with musicians that were older than me mm-hmm. because of playing in the praise band. I always found playing with musicians my age when I was in school, I always found it difficult because I don't know, like, I I guess like maybe the tastes were like, I just never enjoyed it as much as I did playing with musicians who were older than me and more experienced than I was. Mm -hmm. Um, So I never really did like that. Like during, during my educational years, I never really got into that stuff. You know, I was always playing with like other like musicians in a different setting. Okay. So that kind of leads us up to, uh, you know, once you got out of college and, you know, you had committed your entire life at this point to playing in music, what were your steps after college to, you know, continue a career in music? Seriously, um, auditioning. Okay. Um, I, I, so it was one of those things where like, you know, I had done some auditions before, um, like while I was kind of in early college for different things and then like for musicals and stuff like that. And then, you know, I got a girlfriend or I got a job and, you know, just other things got in the way of of that. So I kind of like put it all in the back burner Mm -hmm. after college. I was like, you know what? No, I really like, I'm going to give this my shot. I'm going to put everything I can into being a full-time musician Mm -hmm. at any cost, any level. So I went to one of the theme parks here in Florida Mm -hmm. and um, just, I went to go do an audition and the whole point was for me to fail. Um, I went there with the, with the thinking of, I'm not going to get this job, but I'm going to walk away knowing what they expect from an audition. Sure. You know, learning what the process is so that, so that the next audition they hold, I can come in and kill it. Mm -hmm. That was, that was my whole thought process. Um, so I I walked into that situation without a care in the world. I was like, I'm just going to pay attention. I'm going to be polite. I'm going to, just do what they asked me to do and try and figure out what they're expecting from me mm-hmm. and just walk away. And I think because I did that, I had that mentality. I was way more relaxed. I was kind of enjoying myself more. And from that audition, I got the job. Um, <laughs> nice. Yeah. And it, it really like, it's, I, I, I guess the lesson there is go in and just kind of like, don't, don't care too much at that moment. You know, like obviously we all want the job or there because we want the job, mm-hmm. but be yourself too, because if you have to be somebody that you're not, you know, to have a job, you're not going to be happy in that job. You know, that's kind of always what I took away from that. But, um, and then from there, it was always about keeping your reputation up, mm-hmm. you know, um, cause once you work with like, once you start working in a show or a band, you are now working with other musicians mm-hmm. and that's the reputation you need to be kind of aware of because how do you make the person who's playing with you feel while you play? You know, are you difficult to work with? Do you make it hard for them to follow music and time? Like if they're reading, if they're sight reading a chart and you're sight reading a chart and you're all over the place and you're making it so that they can't listen to you because they're so, they they have to focus so hard on what the music is in front of them. Mm -hmm. That's bad. But 
if you're playing and just trying to set up simple cues here and there so that, you know, like, okay, here's a letter B, da, 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 right? And that way they're like, okay, I know where I am. I can feel a little more comfortable or even in any faucet of that, like any, any version of that. I always try to focus on making sure that the people who are on stage with me are as comfortable as I can make them, mm-hmm. you know? And from that, you know, this keyboard is, he's like, well, I got a wedding band and the drummer's leaving. Are you interested? And I joined that. And then from that, Hey man, we got, we're doing a musical show here. Um, are you available those days? And I could do that. And then I met a guitarist from there and that guitarist wanted to do a studio project and blah, blah. Like, it's just like one of those things where if you, if you work hard at the opportunities you have more opportunities, present themselves to you. Sure. Um, and that's, that, that was always my thing. I never really took an opportunity for granted. I was never like, ah, this thing, this gig is, it's just a gig. It's just a paycheck, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. It always was, well, no, like who am I meeting right now for the first time and how can I make them trust me and want to work with me again? You know, that was always kind of the challenge in my head. And even to this day, even now I'm working with, I'm working with musicians that I've worked with for over a decade. And even now, like there's this one bass player I just played a gig with last week. Um, me and him have been doing shows together 11 years, something like that. Um, we, we, we've been playing with each other for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And even then, I'm still listening to him and reacting to him as you do as a musician anyways, but also trying to make sure that he feels comfortable, you know, um, mm-hmm. And trying to make sure that he feels like I'm giving him the spotlight and that I'm, I'm emphasizing what he's saying, you know, and sure. matching with him, you know, um, because he's a great guy. I love playing with that guy and I want to continue playing with that guy, mm-hmm. you know, and the only way to really do that is for him to still want to work with me. Right, you know, right. the, the second people don't like the second people are like, oh, I really don't want that guy on the gig. That's when you got a problem. Yeah, that that's when things start falling. Well, so that kind of brings us up to you know where you are now. What what are the current projects that you're working on? What are you involved in? So, I am fortunate enough to be um, still doing this full time. Um, I don't do it as much as I used to because um, I now have a daughter. She's turning three later this year, so I do a stay home dad situation. But I'm still, I still can say my full time, my, myself full time because I put in at least 30 hours a week and I do nothing else to make money, but, um, uh, but music and drum. Mm-hmm. Um, I work with the official, oh, I can't really say that on the air yet. It's, it hasn't been announced, but mm-hmm. I work with an Elton John show mm-hmm. that, um, it's a tribute show. And I work with the guy who is Elton John's, uh, body double and piano double, oh, cool. um, for certain things. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. We, we tour the whole nation doing casinos and theaters and big festivals. Um, and that's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy that gig. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the people I work with make it a lot of fun. The music's fantastic. It's Elm John, of mm-hmm. course. Yeah. Um, it's not exactly the most challenging stuff for a drummer, but it doesn't have to be, you right. know, um, the challenge in that show comes from all the touring and the work that I do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also work with another show um, called Celtic Angels. It is a show celebrating the heritage of Irish Americans. Mm-hmm. Um, while I myself have no Irish heritage, um, I really enjoy the music. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to work with those people and to explore that style of music even more. Sure. Um, and that, that one tours seasonally. We usually tour during like the spring season and the, the winter season. Um, so we usually take summer and fall off. So... Um, but I work with them on the production side and then I tour with them as the drummer and percussionist. Um, um, in Florida, I do a lot of event bands and I do a lot of corporate shows. Um, I'm just kind of like one of the guys that people will call when they need a sub. Mm -hmm. So that does whatever. Um, and then beyond that, I have some original projects that I work with. Um, currently the biggest one that I'm working with and one I'm most excited about, it's a band called black gold city. We just released our first single, um, late last month wait yes last month <laughs> and sorry like it, time flies man mm-hmm. yeah so it's last month and we're, we're releasing another another sequel here i think next month um and that's been a lot of fun that that project started out of the whole covid recording um phase that everyone went through um 
I, I have a, I have a studio. I've been working on a studio in my house for the past four years. Um, and it just so happened that, you know, when, when the pandemic hit and, uh, everything shut down, um, I was able to kind of start a, a second business of doing home recording stuff. And it was a very small business. Um, and I've, I've been able to work with some musicians that I both know personally and that I met online, record stuff and send tracks to them and everything like that, um, which has always been a dream of mine doing more recording stuff. And um, from that, this band emerged. Um, and, you know, like the band consists of people from both Florida and California. So we got pretty much like people on both sides of the coast. Mm -hmm. um, some of them I've never met. You know, I have. Uh, there, there are people in that band that I've never physically been in the same room with, mm -hmm. but we're writing music together and now we're staying up for and everything. Um, so that's where that project's been, um, uh, with a slew of other stuff that I'm currently working on, but it's too early to talk about. Okay. Uh, well, where can people find, you know, either the current band that you're working on your own personal social media or like links to anything else that you want to promote? Um, so, uh, Facebook is Mike Pender, uh, P I N D E R on Instagram. My handle is at Pender drums. Uh, again, it's P I N D E R. Um, those are my two main ones. I don't really have a TikTok or a Twitter. Um, for, if you want to hear stuff that I've played on, um, I've played on, uh, artists like Erica DeSegli, uh, Kate judge, Christy Lene. I'm on some of their albums. Um, my current band is Black Gold City. Uh, we are on Spotify, and you can find us there. We're also on every single form of social media. Just type in Black Gold City, and we're one of the top ones to pop up. You, you can't mistake it. It's definitely a band page. The second you see it, you know it's a, it's a band page. <laughs> awesome. So I always like to give the people I'm interviewing the opportunity to put out their last words. So a message that you, know, you resonate with that you want to put out there. Oof, man, I didn't, I didn't think about this one. Um, uh, so many lessons, so many, so many things I want to express to other people. Um, just, just keep believing in yourself. Um, but don't take yourself too seriously, you know, um, be able to be objective in the way you look at yourself, and ask yourself what other people see slash hear when they play with you. Um, and if you can't spread positivity and goodness while doing this, Maybe you shouldn't be doing this, you know? Um, and that doesn't mean if you're unhappy, quit. It means, like, find find a way to be happy and positive doing this stuff. And hard work pays off, you know? I, I don't think of myself as any more talented or any special than the next musician. Um, I, I rarely think that about myself. I, I constantly battle with this idea that I'm not good enough for the things that I do. Um, but I think the the thing that pays off for me is that I'm willing to put in the work. You now, when someone gives me a gig, I take the time, to make sure I'm as rehearsed and prepared as possible. And when I'm on the gig, I am paying attention to what's going on so that if something needs to change, I can change and make it look like it was meant to happen. Um, just, you know, be, be, just work hard, be prepared and be positive about 